Welcome to the Sangha House and our meditation YouTube channel. Now if you're a regular listener to the show, you'll know that uh, I cover different topics. This topic this evening is a request actually from one of our listeners from Carol in Leicestershire. Carol, how are you? Thank you very much for this subject. It's a it's a fascinating question. Um what Carol's asking is, can we cover the subject of being ambitious or competitive from a Buddhist perspective? <laughs> that's, that's, a, uh, that's a juicy question, Carol. I love this one. So this is what we're going to investigate. Um, I'm going to kick off with uh, perhaps some basic thinking in the background of it. And then in the second part of the show, I'll go into some of the deep, deeper Buddhist thinking in this area. But uh, I was thinking about this one, and certainly in the West here, but maybe right across the world now, yeah, our society feels as though it encourages us to be ambitious and competitive all the time. And, and somehow, if you're not ambitious and competitive, you're kind of you're frowned on as if to say, well, you're not joining in, you're not taking part in the world. It certainly feels like that to me sometimes. So... Um, I'm going to look at the pluses and minuses of, the, of these two traits first um, before I get on to the more, the more sort of spiritual implications. So I guess I'm going to first tackle the area that most people have uh, leapt on when hearing this, uh, competitive. Uh, the implication there is sport. Where would we, we be without competition in sport? So I like many sports. I enjoy sports. I love rugby. I love to watch rugby. And I also love winter sports such as skiing and bobsleigh and things like this. It brings me a lot of joy and I'm sure it does for a lot of people. Uh, it helps people with a motivation to keep fit. And um, it's entertaining, frankly. Uh, the world would be a duller place without sport, in my view. Um and then we have ambition. And of course, here we're talking about career, jobs, perhaps, and our progress through them. We're not all ambitious. Uh, we don't all go searching for a career necessarily. But I think it's true to say when we discover something we have a passion for, ambition can often strike. It kind of <laughs> creeps up on us when we're unawares. When we're motivated by a calling, perhaps a service in some way, then that ambition to develop in this area becomes very strong. Uh, and I think this is healthy and positive. So, yeah, so far, Carol, I haven't uh, dismissed competitive or ambition. Um, I think they're both part of life and they can be both healthy. So here comes the however. <laughs> There is a fuzzy line in both these areas that when we cross, they both become unhealthy and negative. And in my view, uh, it's my personal view, this, I think we can sum this up with one word, money. Now, there may be people lis listening to this now thinking, oh, here we go. Here's another hippie saying we should all turn our backs on money, go and live in trees and eat turnips. <laughs> No, that isn't what I think. Uh, I do believe money can be a real force for good. When it's applied in the right way, it can deliver compassionate change into a single person, into a place, say a town, or even into a whole country. The Christian Bible is often misquoted here. And the quote that comes out is, money's the root of all evil. That's incorrect. The correct quote is the love of money is the root of all evil. And I think this comes to the heart of these two words, ambition and competition. It is where the love of money gets involved. This is where things go sideways, I think. When the purpose of the competition or the ambition is to just make money. Actually, my view, we should see money as a side effect of a job well done or perhaps a game well played. A side effect, not the purpose. I, I think back to my degree. I studied business as part of my degree. 
And on the first day of the business module, sitting in the lecture theatre, the lecturer gave us a quote. The purpose of a business is to grow and make money. And all those years ago, I remember sitting there and thinking, <laughs> I don't agree with that. Uh, surely the purpose of a business is either to provide a service or to make things and do this in a way which delights customers and generates jobs for people. So actually, I think this is a key way to think about competition and ambition. Both these things, I think, should be viewed in terms of what can be given rather than what can be taken by the individual. This all sounds very noble and selfless, doesn't it? It's not as hard as it sounds. And after our first meditation this evening, I'm going to explain why I believe we should think in this way. We're going to kick off with the meditation scan, uh, body, the, sorry, the body scan. And actually, when we get to the second half of the show, I hope you'll appreciate why the body scan is so important. So I'm going to be talking you through the body and all you're going to do is pay attention to sensation. Just see what you can feel in your body. It's that simple. Um, actually, it's not that simple because the mind tends to interfere. And when it does, we have to let it go. I really recommend you join in. Uh, make sure you're not going to be disturbed. Nice, comfortable sit seated posture. You can sit on a chair, gentle, upright spine. So through this meditation, we're really going to get in touch with our bodies. We're going to just pay attention to pure awareness. Awareness of sensation, what we can feel. That's all we need to do. Now you will find the mind interferes. It creeps in with expectations and judgments. Or even thoughts about your day or challenges in your life. And the, the kind of objective of this is to learn to let go of all that, even for a short time. So get yourself nice and comfortable, gentle seated posture. Check in with the posture and you want it nice and gently upright, not tense, just a kind of a sense of presence in the posture if you like. And the eyes gently close and the gaze rests slightly downcast. This helps to establish concentration. Take a couple of nice deep breaths and on the out breath, a feeling of letting go. Set to yourself a gentle intent that for this short time you're going to stay with the practice. You'll let everything go and just be here focusing on sensation in the body. We're going to start in the feet so take your mind, your awareness down into your feet and see what you can feel. You can tune in to the inside of the feet maybe in the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles. And also out on the surface of the skin where you may pick up tiny little flashes of energy, little sparks across the surface. Look at the nature of those, see how long they last. how random and sporadic they are.
As we go through the body, look for tension and let it go. The more we let go of tension, the more still we become, the more centered the mind will be, the more aware. And come out onto the soles of the feet. And work gently up over the heels. And we travel up now into the ankles. Not so much sensation here, so you may have to really go in. shins and the calf muscles. Let go of tension. Soften. Travel up into the knees, feel the knees. The knees are complex things. Take a look. Kneecaps behind the knees. If you encounter any area with uh, any challenge or difficulty in terms of discomfort or pain, notice how you react, possibly with tension. Soften into the area. Offer it a sense of friendship. See if you can relax and let go in that area. Dealing with pain in meditation teaches us a great deal about dealing with pain and discomfort in life. Travel now along the thighs and the hamstrings. You might feel the contact of clothing perhaps. Then we come up into the sitting bones. You can really enjoy the connection with the earth here. Feel its great stillness, solid and safe underneath, ancient. Just connect with the sense of that. As you relax down, let the head float up a little. It helps to bring that sense of purpose into the posture, a sense of presence, helping us to stay fully in the moment, fully aware. Stay away from tension, just bring that presence in, gentle tone in the body. He says, I'm here, right now. Now take that awareness into the stomach and the heart space. This is the home of your emotions. The energy of the emotion, the feeling of the emotion. Not the thoughts that go with it. Emotion is made up of those two components. The feeling and the thoughts. Here, 
we stay away from the thoughts, we just feel our heart, we feel our gut. Don't try to ask why you feel like this. Don't even try and name the emotion. Just feel. Take a look at your shoulders. We carry a lot of our challenge in our shoulders, tension. So let it go. Soften out. Then we travel down the arms, into the hands and the fingers. These hands, they express our thoughts. So if our thoughts are skillful, compassionate, our actions will be. As you feel the sensations in your hands, you can celebrate the nature of what they're able to offer in terms of compassion, skillful connection with the world, generosity. We come up now to the head, exploring the scalp. And then we soften in the face. Feel the face soften, feel the tension come out of it. Bring all of these sensations in the body together, from the toes right through to the top of the head. Feel everything sitting in your space, fully present. Nothing else is needed. Okay, so competition and ambition. It probably sounds crazy, but rather than thinking of these as uh, directing them inwards towards self, we should explore ways to shift that focus so that they're expressed outwards. Let me explain why. Essentially, these two words, competition and ambition, they drive to the heart of Buddhist thinking around the origin of our human struggle and challenge. The Buddha set out three roots to this, desire, aversion, and delusion. What are these? Well, desire, fairly self-explanatory. It's our craving nature. It's our wanting of stuff. Uh, And when we got it, it's our nature to keep it, to not let it go. Aversion, uh, yes, pushing things away we don't like, avoiding things that perhaps we might think will cause us harm. And uh, yeah, um, actually aversion and our craving nature have crossover points. So where we've got things that we want to keep, um, we avoid the potential loss of those. 
So that's a, a, a side of aversion. And then we have delusion. And delusion is the mind's ability to fool us into seeing the world the way it isn't. And it really comes from, well, all of our beliefs, all of our biases, our deeply held um, prejudices, if you like. We've all got them. We're all human. And actually, these lead to desire and aversion because they they fall the mind into thinking they want something that isn't really there um, or to feel fear towards something that isn't isn't actually there so a delusion is very very tricky very powerful uh, and actually these drive directly back into competition and ambition so where you've got competition you know, the desire to win, the desire perhaps to win the prize, the trophy, um, the fear of how you're going to look when you don't win, uh, how your friends and your supporters will react. Um, so desire and aversion and delusion is playing in the background here. Um, and with ambition, similar sort of thing, you know, here we're talking about career, job, um, so the expectation is that the more we progress, the more money we get. And our focus then starts shifting towards that money. And our aversion, uh, we could lose the job. Uh, now, I've got to say these are very, very human things. I'm not, I'm not saying they're bad and we should uh, feel guilty about feeling this way. It's human. Uh, that's what we do. That's what we are. So... Um, Buddhism doesn't work like that. It doesn't have good and evil. What it does have is skillful and unskillful or wholesome and unwholesome. So I described in the first part of the show of uh, a fuzzy line between uh, what you could say is the skillful views of the of competition and ambition and the unskillful. And money defines that fuzzy line. So, okay, we could simply take the money influence out of all these things and say all of competition now is just for fun and uh, career. Yeah, that as well. <laughs> Nobody earns any money. Of course not. No, absolutely not. Um, you know, as I said, money actually, it can drive real compassionate change. There's nothing wrong with money. Um so how do we know when we're approaching the fuzzy line? What's the cutoff? Are we talking about a certain amount? No. No, we're not. Now here, what we're talking about is using our mind and our awareness to notice when we're slipping into the unskillful or the unwholesome behavior. When ambition and competition are being applied skillfully, we actually feel content. We feel fulfilled, joyful, happy. Um, when other things are starting to creep in, actually what happens is tension. Uh, it's driven out of conflict because of those desires and aversions. Uh, so we start to feel conflict and we, we feel anxious that we're not going to win the money. We're not going to... Uh, get a salary increase. Um, so the key here is to start looking at the the tension that appears in our minds and our bodies. That's hard work to go through life all the time, paying attention to uh, to tension in the body. <laughs> um, when we're in the thick of work and things aren't going well, of course we're going to be tense. Um, meditation here can help so in meditation we we develop a habit of watching that's what really what we're doing when we're in, on the seat on the cushion we're developing that habit of watching and that will naturally kick in in our daily lives we'll, we'll feel the tension creeping in and we'll notice it we'll be aware of it quite naturally and we'll go where's that coming from uh, is it just from the fact that the job is hard work? Or actually, 
is this because, uh, you know, I'm starting to introduce some unskillful thinking here and I'm focusing too much on the the money side and the getting and the, the wanting and the the aversion side. And actually what I can do is just gently adjust my focus to how I can uh, you know, deliver externally better, uh, more. Um, and when we do that, the contentment, the joy, um, because of that skillful nature, comes back in. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to use the mindfulness of breathing to really focus on this idea of softening when we feel tension. Uh, developing that habit of awareness and noticing when conflict is creeping in um, so we can carry that habit into our daily life. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's develop a nice deep uh, awareness to develop that habit of noticing tension in the body and the mind. So just settle into your seat again, close your eyes. Take that nice couple of deep breaths. First of all, just return to that experience of the body that you felt in the first meditation. A complete picture. So you can feel all the sensations in the body from the toes to the top of the head. Also you pick up the sensation of the emotions in the heart space. Letting go of all tension. You feel your space around you, the earth underneath you. Just settle back into that complete picture of this present moment. Just feeling all of that. Just enjoy being fully present. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Right now, there's nothing going on except this. What you can feel, what you can experience right now. Let those thoughts go. Just be. As you sit here, you start to become aware of the body breathing. A key part of ambition and competition, where the tension creeps in, is when we have expectation and judgment, self-judgment and expectation. When those expectations aren't being met by ourselves, we judge, we get tense. The same can happen in meditation. So here, we watch the body breathing. If we notice the mind saying, this breath should be deeper, should be calmer, we let that go. That's just an expectation. 
It's just something the mind is trying to achieve with meditation. We let all that go. Just be with the breath. Let the body breathe exactly as it wants to breathe. Just feel that. Just enjoy feeling the body breathe exactly as it wants to. Be fully with this breath, not thinking about the next one. Be completely here. When we have ambition, competition, the mind is projecting forwards, looking at what it might achieve, what benefits it can get. So we train the mind to be fully here, to notice when it's projecting ahead to maybe the next breath or the end of the meditation. We draw it back, we experience this breath fully and completely, coaching the mind to be fully present. So we can go in deeper, divide the breath up into the in-breath and the out-breath and be fully present with wherever we are on that breath cycle. This breath, this in-breath or this out-breath. Notice if there's any tension in the breath cycle. See if you can soften it out. Bringing a natural sense of stillness into the whole picture by taking out all the tension. develops a habit of paying that same attention when we get off the cushion and go out into the world. So develop that habit, just being fully present. You can notice the way the breath, the breathing effect, affects the whole body. All those sensations you felt in the first meditation, tune in again and notice how as you breathe, they gently change. The breath is like a wave going through the whole body. You can feel it in your arms, in your hands, 
new face, new eyes. Tune in to the body breathing, the entire body. See what you can feel. There's nothing to compete against in meditation. There's nothing to achieve with meditation. We're just here, just experiencing. Stop trying, just be. By learning to do this in meditation, we learn to do it in life to stop trying, maybe start living. In this way, we can learn the joy of competition. We can learn the joy of offering service through our jobs, contentment. The ambition, the practice of it in Buddhism is very different to the usual interpretation. outwards with generosity, skillful delivery, wholesome, helping others and helping ourselves. This is where the contentment and the joy comes from. So sitting in meditation, this is what we do. Cripples in a pond, we make a difference on Mani Padme Hall. It's been lovely to sit with you and meditate this evening. I hope you've got something out of that. Carol, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll get in touch soon (laughs) and see if I answered your question. Best wishes, everyone. Take care. Bye for now.